What's going on guys? How the hell did you get in my kitchen? Oh, that's right, I set up all this gear a few minutes ago. Anyway, we're talking about YouTube growth today to be able to build your channel and your brand and all that good stuff. But before we jump in to the meat and potatoes of the video, there's been something I've been meaning to do for a while now. Much better. Now, let's shoot a video. All right, so I wanna start with something that's super important yet a lot of people overlook, and that's your profile photo and your header image. As a YouTuber, having a channel, you can customize this. It doesn't matter if you have five subscribers or 500,000 subscribers. Whether I do a profile photo like, and then have a header image like, the brand is around you. Don't hide behind too many logos or too much text or too dark of a mysterious figure. And that's only my advice to you guys because I think that your face being first and foremost out in the forefront of your audience is really going to help them connect with you as a person, as a human, as a creator, rather than just hiding behind something that you could have found on Canva. Hey, did you see my new single? It's over on YouTube right now. It's right after I uploaded the lasagna recipe that I absolutely love. I got it from my mother-in-law. And then um, it's actually two videos before my, my son's third birthday party video. Um, and there might be a video of me skiing in Aspen. If you see that one, just ignore that one. That was just supposed to be sent off to a coworker of mine. Like, that's pretty ridiculous, right? You're sending people off to a channel that just has way too much variety. You're trying to throw a lot of things up against the wall, and I used to do it as well. You can go through my channel and see some crazy off the wall ideas, and until I found that singular focus, I never grew. I never could predict my growth. I never could predict who my audience was going to be. So you as a music creator need to stay focused. You can do other things aside from just like beat making videos, cover songs and music videos as a music creator, but it should all boil back down to that singular focus. All right, so if we're on a mission and we set out to build a successful YouTube channel, the tools that are in our toolbox are going to be important for growth. And when we outgrow those tools, that's a problem. And I'm not talking about a camera or a fancy light or a microphone or a software or anything like that. The majority of these videos that you're gonna do can be edited. YouTube has its own editor. You can do them on your phone for that matter. And the camera quality on phones these days is just unbelievable. But one thing that I'm referring to is the tool that I've been using for over two years, and that's a browser plugin, a browser extension called Tube. Buddy. I'll put the logo up on the screen or whatever, and I'll have a link in the description box below where you can go get set up. It's free. Obviously, there's paid tiers, but the free one is all you need to get started. And it's going to help show you what to use for keywords, what to use for your titles. Uh, when you have like the advanced plan or whatever, you can even compare thumbnails. It's like awesome. And the fact that they even have a free plan is pretty freaking cool. It's in the description box below. This is a tool that if you're serious about YouTube, you need to get your hands on. So TubeBuddy, Go check it out. Now, when it comes to your YouTube channel itself, I always try to encourage a really good workflow through your channel, beautify it, but make it make sense for new audience members. We can't assume that everybody that's coming to our channel knows how to navigate around your channel. So I always recommend having either a welcome video or posting your current, your la latest video, your current video up at the top. I'll show you a kind of a screenshot of what my channel layout is right now. But one thing that I see a lot of people making a mistake at, especially those that are out there getting a, an official article artist channel is that the official artist channel by default shows all of your most successful videos at the top. Then somebody has to scroll all the way down two or three different playlists to find your uploads. Imagine somebody coming to your channel, check out my new video, go to my channel. And then they don't know what your new video is or where it is because it's three rows down. I always recommend putting that up a little bit higher at least so that people can find your recent uploads. Uh, one thing that I kind of uh, is an early indicator of this is when someone comes to me and says, Adam, I was getting views. Adam, I was getting a ton of traction and then all of a sudden my, late, my latest videos aren't getting any views. They're not getting any uh, engagement whatsoever. And then I go through and again, I have to go down their channel and before I can find their new uploads. You want your newest stuff to show early on in the process before the fold if possible. Now the fold is what they can see before they have to start scrolling down. But if you're not putting the new stuff out in the front, Imagine having all this new gear at a, a clothing store just tucked in the back and they can't find it. Your 
not gonna be surprised that it doesn't sell. That's why they put the new product up in the front window. So put your new product up in the front windows and give them something to stick around for and be able to follow the flow the way you intend. So something a lot of people don't talk about is the utilization of playlists on a channel to give people a way better user experience. If I have videos that are specifically beat making videos, I have specific cover videos, I have specific how-to videos, motivation videos, uh, gear review videos, put them in playlists. Give somebody a video right after that one that is going to align with what they're watching now. If they got if they got their attention, and if they're watching all the way to the end, you might as well put it in a playlist because if they like that style of video from you, even if you have a couple different varieties within that main focus, they can just click that playlist and watch all the way through it and binge watch no different than we do on the streaming platforms such as Netflix or Hulu. So make sure that you're utilizing playlists. If somebody's asking for specific videos, for example, and that's your newest video, send them to the playlist. They're gonna see that one first, but then they're gonna see a whole lot of other videos that they might just end up loving. Now, I think it's safe to say that the majority of us have been on Netflix or Amazon Prime, Hulu, Disney Plus, for example, in the days past, especially during this pandemic, but we have to start taking influence from what they're doing for us as their audience and start delivering that to our audience. I'm talking about titles and thumbnails. When we go on the interface and we're trying to find a show or a, a movie to watch, we're looking for something that stands out to us. Same goes for a title and a thumbnail. The importance of it is so important that it's going to get the attention of your audience and tell them, hey, this is something worth watching. And no, you don't have to be doing clickbait titles, clickbait thumbnails. Don't do that because you're gonna lose their trust. However, so many of you spend all this time and energy building these amazing visuals, these great videos, and then you're lazy with the thumbnails. Look at this thumbnail compared to that thumbnail. Look at this title compared to that title. There's a huge difference with very little work involved. So don't sell yourself short. Make sure that your titles and your thumbnails are on point because that's gonna be the gateway to people watching your content. Now, if I started my videos like this and then I sat back and I'm like, um, what was I thinking about? You'd get bored pretty quick, right? I hope you didn't click off when I did that just then because I know you're tempted to look at your phone. That's why pacing is so important. When you're doing videos, I don't care if you're doing a vlog, I don't care if you're doing a behind the scenes on a music video or how you created a composition or maybe you're a beauty influencer and you're doing like a makeup tutorial or something. Make sure that the pacing keeps people interested. Do the boring test, as I call it. When I edit a video, when one of my team members, Danny, Ricky, shout out to my team, when they're editing a video, we watch through it. And if we're tempted to look at our phone during the run through, we know that the pacing probably could be a little bit better. Now, obviously, there's gonna be points where if you're doing a how-to video or something, and it's a little bit slow, people at different attention spans are going to get bored and fall off. But overall, your pacing is so important because we wanna get people towards the end of the video. If you can get somebody from the beginning of the video all the way to the end of the video, and then get them to click on a video at the end, that's a CTR, that's a click-through rate. If you can keep them on the platform, keep them on your channel, your channel's gonna blow up, I promise you. Keep the pacing interesting, keep them moving through, don't make them bored, get them to click on the end of the video, don't do one of these super long intros, super long outros, don't give them any warning that the video is about to end. Cut it down, YouTube gives you 20 seconds as of right now to show the different video previews and the subscribe button and the overlays as they call cards and end screens. You wanna set those up, send them to another video on your channel and keep them in your ecosystem. Now I need your attention. So whatever you're doing, just give me a few seconds here because this is gonna take you further on YouTube, further in your life than any other piece of advice right now. And that's consistency. Now before you roll your eyes, Consistency is the reason that the first eight years of my YouTube journey, I only accomplished 55,000 subscribers. And then in the last two years, I've been able to surpass 200,000 subscribers. Consistency is how I've grown on Instagram from zero followers to over 61,000 followers organically with very little ad spend or promoted post ever. It's why you care about the content. The first eight years on YouTube were a shit show. It wasn't fun. I had a few videos go viral that did nothing for my growth. I had a whole lot of ideas that I threw up against the wall and they didn't do anything. It wasn't until I got consistent, I took it seriously. In fact, I did a video a little over two years ago that said 55,000 subscribers, it's time to take over YouTube. That video right there was the beginning of when I was taking it seriously, the beginning of going all in and saying, hey, it might not grow fast, it might not be pretty, but I'm going to stay focused. I'm going to stay consistent. And since then, over the last two years, 
I've averaged one or two videos a week on YouTube almost every week with very little exception. That's why I have this little award. You wanna know a little funny inside story? I didn't open this until 200,000 subscribers because I wanted to prove to myself that it wasn't just a, a one-trick pony. So many times people get the 100,000 subscriber plaque and they say, oh, I made it. And before the, before the UPS man even delivers it, they're getting their cameras set up to do an announcement video on their YouTube channel. And then they get complacent. Going from zero to 100,000, cool. Going from zero to 200,000, take some consistency. Go figure. Going from 100,000 to a million is why there's a whole lot of people out there that have 100,000 plaques like this. Whole lot. It's not that uncommon. But there's very few that have the million. Because you can't get caught up with awards like this. You can't get caught up with patting yourself on the back. You can't get caught up with feeling yourself too much or feeling like you've accomplished everything you've ever wanted. Be proud but never satisfied, as the saying goes. I'm very proud of this. I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish with this channel because, let's face it, I could put out a million videos. I think I have about 250-something, 260 at this point when you're watching this as a new video. But I'm not going to stop. I'm going to be at 500 videos someday, 1,000 videos someday. You know, there's going to be a point where I'm probably in my 40s or 50s. I'm an old man on YouTube with 2,000 videos. But that's where the consistency comes into place. You need to be able to focus and shift that focus when that focus isn't something you're passionate about or that focus isn't something that you really care about. You just think that you're going to get some views. You're out there chasing virality. You're on TikTok trying to get a viral video. You're on YouTube trying to get a viral video. But what's a million views on one video when you could do 100 videos and get 2 million views from people that actually care about you as a creator? Don't let a trophy like this hang up on your wall and make you feel like you're invincible, make you feel like you made it because you didn't. That's the starting point for me. That's why I waited to 200,000 so I could prove to myself that I could stay consistent and that it wasn't just a fluke that my channel blew up. I went from 55,000 to 100,000 pretty quickly once I started getting consistent. Then I went from 100,000 to 200,000 in just over a year. The sky's the limit when you really focus and you really find your niche, but you have to continue to dial things in. You have to continue to make tweaks and do something that feels authentic and is also wanted by your audience. If you can evoke an emotional trigger out of someone, if you can educate, entertain, inspire, those are the things that are going to move a channel forward. If you're making content, just thinking that posting daily is going to build a YouTube audience, you guessed wrong. You need to do something that you feel good about that also resonates with an audience. Now, I wanna help you build your marketing ecosystem and not just one account on one platform, so watch this video next. It's really going to move you in the right direction. Join the channel family by clicking that little button on the screen, then smashing that bell icon so you can be notified first anytime I upload a video just like this. Come connect with me over on Instagram, all the links in the description box below, and until next time, I appreciate you watching.